So our first competitor is Jenna Fireberry. Her topic is Words Matter, Understanding Rape Myth Acceptance and Survey Design. She is uh, pursuing a Master of Science in Applied Criminology, and her major advisor is Christine Arizon. I want you to imagine a chair. What does this chair look like? What is it made out of? How many of you pictured a wooden chair with four legs? Most of us, when asked to think of a chair, don't think of a bean bag or a camping chair. The common image of the wooden chair serves as a template for our understanding. The same is true for the way we think about rape. When asked to imagine a typical rape, most people will say it takes place in some secluded location where a stranger lurks in the darkness. But in reality, we know that 90% of rapes occur between people who know each other in places that are supposed to be safe. So why does this matter? When it comes to the realities of sexual assault on college campuses, many times our understanding is shaped by misinformation. These stereotypes about rape are referred to as rape myths. Rape myths are culturally held beliefs that create a climate which justifies sexual violence, specifically violence by men against women. Understanding this is important because research has widely established that the acceptance of rape myths is associated with a heightened propensity for males to perpetrate and an increased likelihood that victims will blame themselves. Scientists typically measure rape myth acceptance using surveys. Rape myth acceptance simply measures how much you agree with a stated rape stereotype or myth, such as the one on the screen behind me. My research sought to answer a simple question. Are students more likely to agree with survey statements that use neutral language and avoid the word rape? To test my hypothesis, I randomly assigned over 1,000 incoming freshmen to two survey groups. The first group received a traditional rape myth acceptance survey, and the second group received a very similar survey, but with two key differences. The word rape was replaced with sexual assault, and I eliminated gendered phrasing that placed men in the role of perpetrator and women in the role of victim. I predicted that students given the altered survey would be more likely to agree with survey statements because the language was relatively neutral. My hypothesis was supported. Students given the survey with neutral language showed a heightened acceptance of rape myths. This means that campuses using traditional survey measures may be underestimating the risk of sexual assault to their campuses. And although students today are required to receive annual training on sexual assault, my results suggest that more attention is needed to address the attitudes and beliefs that may precipitate rape. Finally, rape myths do not simply exist in theory. They are tangible and common. We hear them in our classrooms, in popular media, in locker room conversations. Therefore, the use of accurate and relevant survey measures is a critical step in our efforts to prevent sexual assault. Thank you.